and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show, the show where we put you in front of where the action is in the broader markets. And we certainly have an awful lot to discuss as the rotation in the markets away from some of these healthier growth names is continuing to evolve. So let's go ahead and dig right in. Take a look at our agenda today. And as always, we are going to go ahead and begin with a review of the current markets. Where did we end the week so that we can have a good uh, feeling going into next week and beyond? What to be on the lookout for? We're going to Take a deep dive into those leadership areas, see where did they close this week, again, always with an eye toward going forward, and high-yielding stocks to buffer your portfolio. I did cover this a bit last week. Uh, lots more names to share this week. It's uh, really an interesting phenom as far as these really constructive, positive-looking charts and some big yielders in there as well. So I'm going to share some names. Uh, making the case for discounters, we're going to take a look at some of these discount retailers that are seeing their price targets raised and having constructive-looking charts as well. And then also stocks making the first, what I call recovery steps. These are stocks that were big leaders, big winners going into September. They had fallen out of bed and they are beginning to show signs of reversing their downtrends. So you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for that because within that, I will share with you what to be on the prowl for to let you know that the stocks, uh, the downtrend has in fact reversed. We're not quite there yet. These are first recovery steps that I'm seeing. And then also uh, growth. There is still in areas within uh, high growth stocks that are outperforming. So we're going to, I'm going to share those names with you as well. And then as always, we'll just take a quick minute here and take a look at some of the news that was released this week again to provide you with some framework so that you can uh, anticipate particular areas of the market depending on that given news. The Federal Reserve did release their notes, uh, meeting notes on Wednesday and they vowed to keep interest rates near zero until 2023. This is certainly very big news. Of course, we're in an unprecedented period within the economy and elsewhere. Also, uh, U.S. manufacturing for August, it did expand at its fastest rate since 2018. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out to you is we are seeing a rotation into some of these industrial stocks, and you, of course, would want to see an economic data that backdrop that would support that move into that area. Industrial production came in just a bit weaker than anticipated. So there was a little bit of weakness there. So we can see we are getting a bit in the way of conflicting news. Uh, jobless claims did come in a tad lower than expected. So that's certainly good news there. And we also did see uh, housing starts fell quite a bit in August, more than anticipated. So in essence, we are seeing news that is just a little bit conflicting. Uh, however, we are, the markets uh, really ended the week mostly uh, flat, down a little. We'll get into all that as we move on. Uh, but consumer sentiment. It rose to the highest levels since March, and uh, good old U.S. consumer out there, not only are they uh, retail sales numbers are looking Im improving, but we are seeing that sentiment among consumers is high. So that's always good news as a backdrop. Let's go ahead and take a look at these markets. We are going to start as we usually do with a daily chart of the S&P 500. And of course, during this nice bullish recovery phase out of the bear market, we were seeing the index finding support for the most part above this upward trending green 10 day simple moving average. The indices did peak earlier this month breaking below that 10 and 21 day simple moving average. And that is certainly uh, when things did get quite dicey to Day, the S&P joined the NASDAQ and closed 
below that 50-day simple moving average. I'm just going to go ahead and share the stochastics very quickly because we want to see where they are relative to be uh, what we are going to be on the lookout for uh, for this market to get back into good standing. So we can see, actually, I just want to do the full stochastics, not quite as noisy, and you'll see that unfortunately the stochastics were beginning to turn around. This was actually last week going into uh, the beginning of this week, there was a sense that we could maybe get a bit of a, a recovery. Unfortunately, we ended the week uh, in weak fashion, W-E-A-K, and we can see that the indice found resistance at this 21-day simple moving average as the markets were attempting to recover that nice bullish uptrend. And those of you that are subscribers to the MEM Edge report, as you know, going into this week, super cautious because of this inability to break up above. And now with that 50-day simple moving average being broken on big volume, it certainly does involve more red flags. Uh, not overwhelming, but certainly not, uh, would not say to put on new positions uh, with unless they are in some of these newer areas. We're going to take a look at where the weakness was, of course, this week and over the last several weeks relative to uh, where we're seeing outperformance. So here we have the sectors within the S&P 500, that RSI indicator in descending. We want to see where the relative strength is. Where is that outperformance uh, being taking place. So we can see that materials stocks, I'm going to share a couple of names in here. This is all about the infrastructure, cyclical steel building, uh, the economic recovery phase that we are in now. And these stocks are benefiting. So a uh, nice uptick here. Industrials up here in the forefront. I talked about this industrial space as having come back to life. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at a bigger view of the industrials. And you can see that they really had a pronounced move in the beginning of August before just settling, if you will, marking time. And more recently, we are poised to have this nice two and a half week base breakout on the industrial group. So again, we'll go ahead and cover some of the more compelling names within that. Now let's go ahead and drill down and see where we experienced weakness. XLY this week did suffer, and I will say a lot of that has to do with Amazon. Amazon was down over 5% for the week. It is a heavyweight name in there, but there are other areas within the discretionary. Uh, the group was down 1.5% versus the S&P down a little more than a half. We can see the RSI has now turned negative on these discretionaries, but still finding support at that upward trending 50 day. There are certainly pockets of strength within that area. And as we drill down our, what I used liked to call the leading horsemen are now languishing down in this lower quartile. And of course, I'm talking about technology and internet related communication services are now down certainly in this very weak quartile. Tech was down about 1.1% for the week, but let's just take a quick look here because it has broken below this 50-day simple moving average this week, not what you want to see, primarily because tech was the clear-cut leadership going into September out of this bear market. When you lose your leadership, uh, that can certainly spread and be uh, damaging, but what of course, uh, I'm keeping a very close eye on that uh, for my MEM Edge support uh, s report uh, subscribers. So we're going to stay way on top of that. And then XLC also breaking below that 50-day simple moving average. And then we're getting some of these death cross with the shorter term simple moving averages breaking down below longer term. So that can uh, always be concerning negative RSI on your communication services. I would argue uh, a lot of that with uh, XLC, Facebook is a big component there. So a lot of negative action among the uh, bigger bang stocks. Let's just take a quick peek here and it was down 
over 5%. We already talked about Amazon. These, again, were your leaders going into your big mega cap leadership names, unfortunately, uh, falling below key support. So this is not what you want to see as far as uh, being on the prowl for the markets resuming their confirmed uptrends. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, move on. I'm going to take a quick look here at Google just to share with you in case you're not on top of it. Uh, they are all breaking below key support, so not what you want to see. Let's go ahead, drill down a bit further behind these sectors. Again, we want to see where relative outperformance is and take a look. Transport's up here in the forefront, all about rail stocks. They had another good week, but take a look here at a new entrant to the stronger groupings. As mentioned, RSI is the indicator I've added descending. So up here is your strength. So let's take a quick look because biotech stocks were up I, quite a bit this week. They were up 6.7%. And we can see that this downtrend has been reversed. This is a group that I am all over, uh, primarily because of the potential growth prospects when they do get going. They can be tremendous outperformers, as we saw out of this bear market, but they did fall out of favor. This has everything to do with Trump's initiation and his uh, declaration that he is mandating lower price drugs. Biotechs did had do have uh, the most to lose from that. But this week, we did see this sharp reversal all about uh, takeover targets, big pharmas investing. Uh, Seattle Genetics is one name. Let's just, as long as we're here, we can take a quick look because they were injected with a billion uh, from a very large pharma. And we can see this nice, sharp downtrend reversal. Seattle Genetics uh, was a big winner for us prior to falling out of favor with the broader markets grouping. So let's take a look further beyond. We can see gold just languishing for the week, but there was another surprise, if you will, and that is small cap stocks. Now, it's not easy to decipher from here, but small cap stocks were up almost 3% for the week. So when you see a move into small cap as well as into biotechs, that really implies a risk on environment that investors are willing to invest in these uh, certainly more volatile, riskier, smaller companies, as well as biotechs. A lot of them are trading uh, high levels, lofty levels without any earnings or prospects in the near future for earnings. So this move into small caps, uh, I continue to screen and the markets throughout the week. And uh, there is quite a bit in the way of vibrancy within some of these smaller stocks within areas that otherwise are not working. Technology would be an example. And so let's go ahead and move on because we do have the other broader market indices. Semiconductor stocks were up 1.1% for the week. Some nice news among the leadership names in semiconductors. And then also software stocks. They were flat for the week. These are two areas that I cover very closely. A lot of fast moving, higher growth names among them. So we are anticipating and looking for a stabilization within these groups prior to re-emerging and recapturing their prior big uptrends. I'm just gonna show software quickly for those of you that might not be familiar. We, um, we can see really just how powerfully strong these software cloud computing, very, very important during this lockdown quarantine period. So uh, not a big damage, but it is appearing to stabilize. So uh, this is an area we've had a lot of winning stocks. I'm going to pull up a weekly chart to provide a little more perspective. And you can see that it's just hanging in there on the weekly. This is a 10 week simple moving average. Your RSI is still constructive. So uh, this is an area that we've been heavily involved in and we are looking forward to the group uh, really coming back into favor. And then down here, unfortunately, the NASDAQ among these broader market indices was, uh, it really was not the worst performer for the week. Uh, it was down less than the S&P, but certainly damaging. We're down over 12%. We can see last week we did have that 
RSI break down below 50. Now we have the moving average so oh, this is your MACD momentum indicator below this net neutral. So just gets a very, very heavy feel here for the NASDAQ. But again, all about those FANG leadership names that are just dragging the uh, indices down. So I am going to take a brief break here. When we get back, we have lots more to cover. During every bull market, there are a select set of stocks that far outpace their peers. They trade much higher and much faster than the rest of the markets. The reason? These select stocks have a set of characteristics that history has proven are common among big winning stocks. My easy to follow course will teach you the skills of a lifetime so you can learn how to uncover and then successfully trade these fast moving stocks. Take my five-part course now by going to meminvestmentresearch.com for this limited time offer. And we are back. I'm going to be sharing with you now what I'd like to do is begin this uh, second half with a look at some of these high-yielding stocks that are really remarkably uh, showing strength and outperformance. This first one is Big Five. It's a smaller sporting goods stock, BGFV. And the company, it yields 6.3%, so a really healthy yield. We can see these gaps up here. This is on strong earnings. Now, more recently, the stock subsequent to a run-up after those numbers, it pulled back very orderly, close to this 50-day simple moving average. This is a very attractive daily price chart because what occurred this week is the stock's price has broken back above this 10 and 21-day simple moving average in line with the now upward trending RSI. And take a look at this MACD. This is picture perfect because we can see that the black line is poised to cross up through the red. And that is an indication that the near-term momentum has turned positive. Oftentimes when a stock hits pause, consolidates, you'll see that MACD gen, uh, just going downward toward that neutral. And then this cross along with these other positive factors is really an ideal situation. So a nice 6.3% yielder. Let's take a look at another stock yielding 3.5%. This is Pitney Bowes. PBI is the ticker symbol. And uh, kind of similar, but not as dynamic as big five because we are just breaking up above those shorter term and we can see the RSI is positive. MACD not quite, uh, we have not quite encountered that black line up through the red crossover that we would like to see. But I would tell you to put this on your radar screen. The company did increase their holiday pricing for delivery services, and that should certainly bode well for their revenue prospects. So a nice three and a half percent yielder there. Uh, next up is a restaurant stock. They own, uh, Chili's and Maggiano's, it's EAT, is the ticker symbol. It's Brinker International. And really right now it is marking time. The stock is a 3.2% yielder, but they really got uh, creative. I wrote about this for uh, stockcharts.com, an article, when they just turned positive here, breaking back above this 200 day simple moving average. Take a look at the volume and the reason for this nice base breakout and move above resistance was because the company announced a new, uh, kind of simple, but it's a delivery only concept. It's just wings. And the numbers that the company was reporting were really quite impressive, very, very good. Now, more recently, they are taking that same delivery concept and spreading it out. It's just slider and pies. But uh, the markets, the street likes it, and uh, earnings estimates for next year are 66%. So a uh, nice possible grower there. Let's take a look at GME GameStop. This is a company, of course, that benefits from these uh, the really picked up interest in uh, gaming. And take a look, because it really has had a significant move here uh, because the company announced that they are taking pre-orders for uh, Sony's PlayStation 5. That started today, uh, September 22nd. They are gonna take pre-orders for the Xbox. This company yields 
4%. Now it is a little bit out of uh, extended, no doubt. Uh, I would look for a pullback, but it does have momentum. When you look at these volume characteristics and your RSI MACD are constructive. Let's take a look at another stock. I did highlight this in an article last Friday. Actually, I, uh, during our our show last Friday, I believe, but this is Abercrombie and Fitch. And what caught my eye last week was simple moving average, the constructive action there. And it's continuing to rally. Uh, Abercrombie and Fitch is a retailer and the company uh, does provide a 5.2% yield. They announced earnings back here. They weren't spectacular, but other metrics were quite constructive and the stock remains in a confirmed uptrend. So that is pretty much the, uh, I have a few more here. I'll just do one more because I do wanna move on. There's a lot I wanna share with you. Uh, this is a kind of an interesting one. Uh, let me tell you, the volume's really not there. So uh, I'm just really gonna talk more about the uh, technicals. This gap up here, uh, the company is called Fat Brands and they announced that they are purchasing Johnny Rockets and other restaurants. So this gap up was 175% on the news. It pulled back, but now more recently, it appears to be regaining momentum, that nice crossover on the MACD and RSI. And it is a 9.1% yielder. So uh, I'll go ahead and leave it at that because I do wanna take some time looking at the industrial group and uh, share with you one of the easiest ways that you can do that because it is one of these cyclical areas that is gaining traction. I shared with you earlier, the, and here we are again with that nice uh, daily chart. It's not overly dynamic, but we what we can do, I'm gonna go back here to this sector because I want to get to this summary page. And uh, I'll go ahead and share a couple of things with you here. Let's take a look at the one month performance of all of the sectors. And we can see uh, the difficulty that some areas have had over the last four weeks. This is uh, technology, communication services, and so forth. Industrials up here in the forefront, XLI, as well as materials. We talked about that as well. But let me share with you the three month view. Uh, this will take us back to, uh, of course, three months ago. And we can see industrials really up here in the forefront. So it, it has rested over the last four weeks and we did point that out, but over the last three months, uh, a clear cut out performer in the industrial. So what we're gonna do here is go ahead, click on the name of that sector and you will be presented with over the last three months, your biggest movers. I talked to you about rail stocks. Let's go ahead and get a little more current here with this view. We want to take a look at the last week and we are continuing to see firming up among these airlines. I've covered this in the past. It's not an area that I am particularly interested in. The economics do not look, uh, fundamentals do not look dynamically uh, strong enough to really interest me, but there are other areas that we can look at. So what you can do with these sub industry groupings is go ahead and sort it by stock charts technical rating. These are your sub industry groupings that are the best performers. And interestingly this week, because oftentimes when I do that sort, you'll see the down and out areas rallying stronger than these uh, healthier areas, but not so this week. They're on par. So we can see in line with this move into cyclicals as a, for instance, building materials, fixtures. It's not just construction, uh, home construction, but commercial construction is also seeing vibrancy as well. And we can see, I'll go ahead and share one stock with you that did catch my eye that's just potentially turning uh, positive. This is Martin Marietta, MLM is the ticker symbol. And the company, uh, they own quite a bit in the way of quarries. They provide gravel, concrete, stone, and so forth. But uh, to my eye here, we could be reversing this long-term downtrend coming out of this bear market because this week we did have several days where the stock has been able to uh, find a residence, if you will, above this 
downward trending 200 day simple moving average, your RSI is positive and your MACD just turned positive this week. Now I'll argue it's not the most dynamic of stocks, but I'm really also trying to impress upon you how you can uncover candidates. And I just asked for that that full quote because I want to see the dividend. A lot of these industrials are going to provide you with that yield, 2.2%. Now let's go back again and we can uh, take a look at another view as far as some of these stocks. So in case you're not aware, you can hover over that ticker symbol and get a sense of whether the stock is really uh, up and out, if you will. A lot of these names have had significant moves. We can take a look at Johnson Controls, JCI, and the stock did have a nice base breakout this week on the heels of a very significantly strong uptrend. So we can see uh, stock such as JCI uh, looking very compelling. So that's in that industrial area. And then also basic materials. We had some uh, good news out among that group this week. So I'm just simply going to go into the basic materials area. We can see steel stocks up almost 7% and it was really founded on good news. Now, US Steel, good old X had a really significant week up 22%. But let's take a look because I've been sharing with you that concept of downtrend reversals. And the company did come out and with very positive news as far as demand for their products, they provided upbeat Q3 guidance. So management is not just going to make those announcements unless there's they can back it up. So we can see this downtrend reversal on very big volume. MACD turns positive. We already had that RSI trending upward. Let's go back and take a look. There's one other stock that I did want to uh, go ahead within these uh, steel stocks. Take a look at new, cure, new core NUE, nice flat base breakout this week. Take a look at these volume characteristics, huge. This is a 3.3% yielder. And uh, the company raised their guidance actually uh, going into Q3 and almost doubled guidance. So that's huge. So you can see the steel industry is seeing vibrancy. Uh, so that is a way that you can uncover some of those nicer performers within that. Uh, one other smaller stock in the industrial I thought I would share with you, ROAD, mm, not so attractive actually, a little bit too volatile. Uh, from here, I did want to go ahead and talk about some of those discount retailers uh, that are really doing quite well. This is Dollar General. It had this nice base breakout today in an otherwise dismal market. We can see RSI, MACD trending upward. Their price target was raised to $250 from JP Morgan and it's trading now at $208. Let's take a look at another discount retailer uh, because of course discounters, if they're doing it right, they are going to do well during this period of high unemployment. We can see this gap up here, break base breakout uh, back here in the beginning of this month on very strong earnings. The company is uh, opening new stores and they are really uh, bullish going forward on their prospects. Uh, nine major Wall Street firms raised their guidance. Price target as high as 155. And one last one is BJ uh, and what I wanted to point out to you here is that it is uh, trying to turn. We're going to need to see a break, break back above these shorter term simple moving averages to get interesting here. So I will go ahead and leave it at that. For those of you not familiar with my work, go ahead to my website, meminvestmentresearch.com and take advantage. I have a special offer trial for my newsletter, which will keep you very on top of the markets. We're looking for this nice reversal in these leadership names. And then also we are picking up on this rotation into these newer areas. Have a great weekend, everyone, and I'll see you next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.